What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to look at scatter plots for pandas in Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at scatter plots for pandas. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. All right, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at scatter plots in pandas. And this is a basic scatter plot. You say we've got some color here, we've got it offset against a third variable. Very cool. And we're gonna look at all kinds of cool stuff we can do with these. You're gonna use these for all kinds of things, and it's a lot of fun. So let's close this and head over here. So I've got this notebook, I'm calling it scatter. And this is just the basic starter code we've been using for a while. We imported pandas, numpy, and random numbers. We've got this matplotlib inline thing. And we've got our basic random numbers that we've been using forever. And it's just created some random numbers, 50 of them. We got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And we've got it in a basic data frame called my underscore df. So let's come down here and let's create a scatter plot. And to do that, we just call my underscore df, our data frame. And then, as always, set it to dot plot. And then set the kind equal to, you guessed it, scatter, but if we do this and run it, we're going to get an error because we need to designate X and Y coordinates. So what do we want for X? Well, let's say the Monday column. And what do we want for Y? Well, let's say the Tuesday column, whatever. If we run this, now we get this error. Sometimes you get this, sometimes you don't. If you get it, just run it again and it goes away. So uh, it might be the version of Jupyter Notebooks we're running or something. But anyway, here you go. We've got this basic scatter plot. Now there's not much going on here because if we come up here, We've only got 50 random numbers. We changed this a while back. We used to have more, but we changed it for some reason to make the graphs look better or something. So I'm going to go ahead and add 500, make this a lot bigger. Shift enter to run this, shift enter to run this guy again. We get that error, but boom, we get this basic scatter plot. So very cool, very easy. Okay, so maybe this is an interesting visualization. Maybe it's not. What can we do to spruce this up? Well, we can actually offset this against a third variable. So up here we got Monday, Tuesday. Let's pair these off against Wednesday, give it basically a weight of Wednesday. And we can do that by adding a C variable and just passing in Wednesday. When we do that, we get, you can see they're sort of shaded and there's different, you know, darker and lighter colors. And we got the scale over here so we can tell what's going on. Okay, so this is neat, but we would much rather have color. You always want color, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and let's come down here and create another one. And we can add a C map to this. Now we haven't really talked about C maps, but you could add a C map to most of the charts and graphs we've been working with in the last few videos. So uh, there's lots of these and we're gonna look at them in a second, but I'm just gonna set this one to magma because that sounds cool. And when we do, boom, we get this different colored scatter plot, much nicer to look at, much better to pick out different things in it. Like I can tell more from looking at a colored one than I can tell from looking at this, right? A little bit, right? It's just easier to read. So. What are the different colors and the different C maps you can use? Well, I've got this URL, but this changes from time to time. So we're just going to head over to Google and type in matplotlib and then C map. And the first thing that comes up is going to be the thing. It's matplotlib.org slash stable slash tutorials slash colors slash color maps.html. And you can look through here. There's just a ton of these things listed, all kinds of cool things, basic colors, you know, grays, purples, blues, greens. If you want just a green one, you could pass in you know, greens, <laughs> and then we've got greens, right? So this is specific. So capital G, you know, don't put green, it's, it's greens. So they have to be exactly as they're listed here. Uh, we could do poo boo. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Poo boo. Oh, no, see, has to be exact. So purple and blue, I guess, poo boo. It's kind of purpley, purple down at the bottom, blue up at the top. All right, whatever. And all kinds of cool ones. There's sequential ones. So, you know, we could go cool because, you know, I'm very cool. Not at all. Ugh, that's purple and cyan or something. I don't know, teal, whatever that color is. That's terrible. We could go copper. You have divergent ones, right? So, B, W, and R. What's that one look like? B, W, R. I don't know. Maybe this is good. So, I mean, you could really tell the difference when you're looking at things like that, when they're divergent like that, uh, between different weights. So, all right, that's cool. Got that. We've got qualitative. So, I don't know. Let's go set three. What is that? And just play around with these. Get a feel for what's available. Because, like I said, you could use color maps in most of the charts and graphs that we've been playing with. So, uh, that's not great. Uh, and there's some miscellaneous ones. This prism one is horrible. <laughs> All right, look at this one. Prism. Whoa, it's very uh, 
very bright, very stark, very, I don't know, basic colors, whatever that is. So I don't know. I'm just going to change this back to magma. I kind of like that one. I don't know why. I'm in a magma kind of mood today. <laughs> right. So very cool. So now this is interesting and we can really get a good idea of what our data is doing by looking at something like that, especially with these colors. But we can also play around with the size here. So if we come up here and let me copy this guy. And instead of C, we can set it as S for size, I suppose. When we run this again, we get that stupid error, but we get you could sort of tell some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller, but they're so small. It's really kind of hard to tell. You'll also notice that the C map doesn't really work with this. So I'm just going to go ahead and take that off, run it again, same thing. But instead of calling it on our Wednesday column, we can actually multiply all this by 100. So, well, let me put this back. If we were to like multiply by 100, we're going to get an error. It just doesn't work. But we can set all of this into the data frame and then multiply it by 100. Sort of a little hack. So let's go my underscore DF, then pass in our column. So, Wednesday. All right. But then if we multiply this whole thing by 100, boom, we get much bigger things. And this is really kind of cool, but they're all blobbed together. That's not great. We can actually use our alpha channel. Remember our alpha channel from like all the other charts and graph videos we've done? You know, it's basically a transparency. So alpha, we could set it to like 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 or something like that. Now you get some nice transparency in here. Very cool. You can see through things. And this is a very interesting visualization. Maybe we want to make it really big, 200, whatever you like. You could really play around with this and uh, do some cool things. So that's scatter plot. So of course we could still do most of the same things we've done in other videos with charts and graphs. So, you know, if you want to add a title, you just give it a title flag and my awesome scatter plot, something like that. Boom. We got a title. You guys know all those things you can do by now. If you've watched these videos, if not, check out the playlist see all the basic stuff you can do with charts and graphs. And uh, very cool. So that's scatterplot. Very easy, very useful, very cool. All kinds of fun stuff you could do with this one. And you're going to use this for all sorts of things. And uh, there you go. So that's all for this video. If you like, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com. You can use coupon code YouTube 50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So it's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Alder from CodeMe.com and I'll see you in the next video.